Hello everyone. Today we're going to take a look at ARM templates or Azure Resource Manager templates. We're going to deploy these templates via a GUI and we're going to deploy a template via Azure PowerShell through the Cloud Shell. ARM templates are quite an extensive and large subject, but we're going to cover the things that you need to know for the AZ-104 within this video. And we are also going to expand this into another part two video with ARM templates where we will create an ARM template from the ground up or from scratch. I hope you enjoy the content and let's get on with the video. In this video, we're going to be looking at Microsoft Azure deployments. More specifically, how we can actually send commands into Azure to deploy things like virtual machines or storage accounts or even things like quantum computers. Because yes, you can deploy a quantum computer into Azure. Might be a little bit beyond the AC-104, but still, it's kind of cool to know. Uh, this is all going to revolve around something that we need to understand for the AZ-104, which is actually ARM templates or Azure Resource Manager templates. So if we want to deploy something into Azure, like a virtual machine, for example, we want to deploy a resource, we've got a number of different ways of actually doing it. In fact, it kind of looks a little, a little bit like this. Um, you can deploy things via the Azure portal. This will be our GUI. This is our easiest way of actually deploying things into Azure. And if you've got one or two items, you might just use the pointy clicky GUI. If you don't need it to be rede redeployable, the pointy clicky GUI is perfectly fine for you. We could use Azure PowerShell or the Azure CLI. So we're basically using here commands. So we can go and script our deployments. This is one way of actually making deployments um, redeployable and we're deploying it multiple times in the future. That's really, really useful. Uh, we could also use existing REST clients. So there's actually, for example, we can use uh, any kind of REST API. So we can use HTTPS, HTTPS calls uh, to actually send commands directly into the Azure Resource Manager. Based on this, what we can also do is we can use this additional system called ARM templates. Now, you may have seen ARM templates um, or the option for exporting templates in Azure. These can get quite complicated, um, but they're relatively easy to actually understand. So if we take any sort of resource that we've got in the Azure portal, like for example, a virtual machine, this can be represented as an ARM template. Now, what is an ARM template? An ARM template is literally just a JSON file. Everything's a JSON file nowadays. Well, everything is either a JSON file or a YAML file. If you are living in the matrix, um, if we are in a simulation, you are one gigantic JSON file. You can send this JSON file into Azure itself uh, via that REST API. And Azure, uh, as part of the Azure Resource Manager, will then initialize a deployment um, based on the instructions that you've given it within this JSON file for how that virtual machine will de be deployed. So this thing will contain things like, for example, the spec of the virtual machine, the OS of the virtual machine, the storage of the virtual machine, how the networking works, all of those options that you use through the GUI. So let's go take a look at one of these ARM templates that I have built before. It looks like this. In fact, it looks like a gigantic JSON file that's quite long. But if we break this down on this ARM template, it's not particularly that complex. So if we just break this down here and here and here, notice we have these specific sections. We have outputs, resources, variables, and parameters inside here, and also the schema itself. The schema is going to define the things that you can actually deploy uh, within this framework. So, for example, as Microsoft released new versions or new additional settings to uh, sections inside Azure, that schema will get updated with more options. So this little Azure deploy.json file, this JSON file is going to deploy a VM. We can see that by looking at the resources section down here. Again, quite complex, quite a lot of information down here, but since this is VS Code, if you look inside the VS Code extensions and you look for the Azure extensions, 
inside VS Code and install these, these Azure tools right here, this will install a bunch of Azure uh, utilities inside VS Code to make your life easier, including the ability to administer some of your services inside Azure directly from here within VS Code. And it also gives you the ability to understand ARM templates. So this section on the left hand side here has basically represented this JSON file just as a nice expandable system for us. So if we look at resources, we can actually see these are the individual components of the virtual machine. So if we look at the VM name down here, for example, or so if we look at the virtual machine here, you'll see there's a bunch of settings. Break it down, read it, it's not that bad. For example, the hardware profile, the virtual machine size is listed here. The OS profile, the admin username and admin password for the operating system. The OS disk, how big do I want that data disk? If we look at the network profiles, we scroll down here, we can also see, for example, let's take Nick here, uh, we'll have our IP address configurations for our public IP address name and our virtual network name that this is going to be connected to. But notice these values are not hard coded into the file. There's actually two separate things going on here. Notice there's a variable and there's actually a parameter section here as well. Okay, These two things here are referenced further up within this JSON file. So if you expand, for example, variables, these are static things inside this file. So for example, if I called nickname throughout the resources section, that will always have the nickname will be resolved to my VM nick. The address prefix will be resolved to that, the subnet name will be resolved to subnet and so on and so forth. Interestingly, ARM templates actually have some additional services inside here and they have additional functions that they can perform. It's not really just a static file, this thing gets processed by Azure. So this section down here, storage account name. So for this virtual machine, it's going to require a storage account and if you've looked at the storage account video before, you'll know that storage accounts need a unique name. So if you're using this template to deploy again and again and again, you need a different name for every single storage account that needs to be completely unique. So the way that we can actually do that um, is this is actually going to be the name of the storage account, but it's going to be preceded by this information here this concat unique string resource group ID. If you actually go and look this up, concat unique string, this is basically create a random string of numbers and letters. But if you're creating a random string of numbers and letters, you need a unique seed. So it's using the resource group identifier, which is unique in Azure as the seed for that. So based on that information, we know that this function here will produce a completely random string of numbers and letters that will not conflict with any other storage account that is deployed within Azure. So that's kind of cool. If you look inside the parameters section down here as well, these are parameters that you will be prompted for when deploying. So this template itself doesn't have everything completely static. So you might have, for example, admin username and admin password on Windows OS version. So when you choose to deploy this template later on, whether you're deploying it with code or you're deploying it within the GUI, it will actually prompt you to fill in these values. So you can create a template that says you've got this specification in this location with this operating system, but you might want somebody to be prompted for the admin password that's going to be set on this machine every single time. And we could do that through those parameters down here. This output section, is actually just outputting a reference value for the public IP address name. This is not actually really used throughout this template itself, but it is used when we have multiple templates linked together. Let's go have a look at what some of this looks like kind of in the portal itself. Hey guys, me again. Okay, button right down there, like and subscribe. Even the pineapple, the pineapple tells you to like and subscribe right down here. Yeah, some people have a rubber duck for talking to when they need to solve problems. I have a pineapple. Um, hmm. Like and subscribe anyway. Button down there with the uh, with the bell icon. Okay, on with the video. Yeah, on with the video. So over here in my Azure portal, uh, we can see I have a bunch of resources. Interestingly, any of these resources that are actually created, like for example, this storage account down here, course resources, 
can actually be referenced by or represented as sorry uh, an arm template if you scroll down there is an option down here somewhere for export template so right here we have export template this will be on every single resource you've got in Azure, or at least on most of the resources you've got in Azure. If you click on export template, you'll actually see this information represented as an ARM template and all the values in there as well. This means we could actually download this template and actually redeploy this course resources storage account with its existing settings as many times as I wanted to. Bearing in mind that sometimes when you actually go and download one of these things, um, there will be things like unique names inside here, so you won't be able to immediately redeploy one of these templates. But if you download it, it gives you uh, a zip file. If we just open up that zip file over here, you'll see inside there, there is parameters and there is the actual ARM template here. But how do we actually deploy one of these ARM templates? How do we go from this lovely little arm azure deploy.json to something that is actually functioning inside azure that we can redeploy well if i go into resource groups we have another resource group down here called temp and we're going to deploy to this the way we're going to do that is we're going to look for custom and we're going to look for this option here deploy a custom template in fact, there is a number of ways of doing this. This is just the simplest way that you can actually deploy an ARM template. So through here in Deploy Custom Template, you can build your own template in the editor. I'm not going to do that. Honestly, you really shouldn't be using this edit template option in the GUI. You should be building stuff through uh, VS Code. We'll look at how to actually build ARM templates in another video. This is, we're just looking at deploying ARM templates inside the environment itself. So uh, I could select one of the quick start templates. These are provided by Microsoft for me to go and edit. Most resources in Azure have a quick start template, but I'm going to build my own template in the editor and I'm going to load an existing file that I have. So we're in the AZ104 notes repository here on my computer and we're going to go and grab the template section and we're going to go and grab that VM custom script. I'm going to grab this Azure deploy.json file and open that up and you'll see it's actually loaded in here. Okay, wonderful. If we save that, you can see that this is now represented inside this custom deployment. So these instance details, the admin username, admin password, these are the parameters here inside this VS, sorry, inside VS Code and inside the JSON file uh, of the ARM template itself. We could choose to pre populate this as well. There is actually a secondary component to ARM templates which is called the .parameters.json file. You can create another one of these yourself and this file can actually pre fill in some of these parameters. So, for example, notice this has local admin and password here. I could go and take that same file, click on edit parameters here, load a file in, and I could load in that Azure Deploy .parameters JSON file. It loads in local admin and that admin password. If I save it, if you look here now, it has actually populated those parameters for me. That's nice. I'm just going to call this Mike Temp VM for the DNS label prefix here. And we'll leave the Windows OS version as Windows 2016 data center and the VM size as a standard DSV2. Notice this location here, resource group dot location. This is a neat little trick from ARM templates. What this is actually going to do, it's going to read the location of the resource group and use that as the location for the deployment of this virtual machine. I can now click review and create and actually go and very quickly create that VM from this template. There is a number of other ways that we can actually do this. One of the other ways that we can actually do this is to do this via commands. If you pop up Cloud Shell, and you will need to remember this for the AZ104 as well, and wait for this thing to connect. So now we have the Cloud Shell up. If we want to do the same thing in this area, the command we actually need is this one, new-az resource group deployment. 
Now, if I just put a dash on there and then a tab, you'll be able to see a whole bunch of different parameters for this command. The one we are really interested in is this one here for template file, because what I have inside my Cloud Shell is all the same templates that are here locally on my computer. So they're currently in this directory. So if I go to template file dot forward slash Azure deploy dot JSON, this will kick off a deployment. It will ask me what resource group it wants to go into, and it will ask me to populate those parameters that we had before. And it goes off and does it. The key thing here is you won't actually get um, any kind of status bar. This is deploying in the background now, but we kind of have to leave it. If you decide to put on the end of your command here, an extra thing called as job. This will actually go is a background operation in here. And we can actually get back to redoing our shell. This deployment has actually succeeded now. Sometimes that will take a while to process, but that will be deploying directly into our Azure environment. If we go back to our temp resource group, we can actually see here, there's our deployment that was completed previously. If we go into our deployments, what we'll also be able to see is that Azure deploy is currently succeeded here from 12 seconds ago, the one from the new AZ resource group deployment command. You can go into an existing deployment and you can see any of the inputs and you can also see any of the template operations that have actually been related to that deployment. So that means you can actually download an ARM template from an existing deployment that has already happened. You can see the new AZ resource group deployment command. You need to remember this one for the AZ 104 exam. Um, and you can check that out on the documentation. You don't need to worry about the details of this. Um, you don't need to worry too much about um, anything other than the example line there. Um, but just remember that command for the AZ 104 exam. If you pop back here, we can actually deploy ARM templates in a number of different ways uh, if we have multiple services. For example, here, we could have a three-tier template, which is one ARM template file, so one JSON file, that contains information about multiple services. If these services had separate life cycles, we might deploy different ARM template files for each service. So you might have three separate ARM template files, one for the VM, one for the app service, and one for the SQL database. And you might have, for example, a PowerShell script, a PS1 file, or even something like a bash script um, to actually automate the deployment of these three ARM templates and kick them off. The other way you could accomplish this is you could have these things called nested VM templates, where you can actually have an ARM template actually inside another ARM template. So you only have one deployment but that one deployment will then link to multiple other ARM templates underneath, and you'll end up with all of your resources actually deployed down here. This all relates to the concept of infrastructure as code, or more to the point, defining your resources as templates before you deploy them. So that kind of concludes taking a quick look at ARM template deployments, and we looked at deploying ARM templates in two different ways, via the GUI and via PowerShell inside the Cloud Shell. Now, what I'm going to do is in future videos, we are going to look at actually creating an ARM template from scratch. It's a bit beyond what we're looking at in this video, um, and I hope you'll join me next time to catch up with that. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.